Good morning. Good morning. Sorry for being a little helpless, but uh, I, will be, I will be reading from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 27. <clears throat> for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the same, for in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would, we, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot stay, say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater uh, honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no 
dissension. Dissension mm -hmm. within the body, but the members may have the same care for another member. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it, together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So far in this study of our life together, we have seen that we as the church are called into fellowship with God and fellowship with one another as the body of Christ. We have also been reminded that we are the family of God and called to love the Lord, called to love each other, and called to love our neighbors. Today we are going to see how the church is like a body. You heard that word, we are the body of Christ, so often in the scripture reading this morning. And we are like a body with Christ as the head of that body. And the members being totally dependent on the head and on each other. For truly we can say that there is no life beyond the body. So let's look at the church as the body of Christ. Paul talks about the church as the body of Christ. In Colossians 1, 18a, he says, He, Christ, is the head of the body, the church. Paul was right in the middle of the growth of the church after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension into heaven. Paul, after he met Christ in his dream, you know, in his vision on the road to Damascus, began planting churches. That was what he excelled at doing. He was a church planter par excellence. And he, every church he established, then he wrote to, right? And so in 1 Corinthians, where we read about being the body of Christ, with Christ as the, the body of the church, as with Christ as the head, Paul was writing to the Corinthian church that had been established. And then here in Colossians, He's writing to the people of Colossae and the church established there. And then in Ephesians 1, 22 through 23, Paul, again, is writing to the Ephesian church. And he says, and he, God, I put the words in parentheses, has put all things under his, Jesus' feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of of him who fills all in all. Paul was sure that the newly formed Christian churches would not continue to function well if Christ was not the head of each one of those churches. So, as the body of Christ, first of all, the church is saved by Christ, not as an entity, the church, but individually, each of us comes to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it says in Ephesians 5.23b, Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior. That's why we gather together. Because we have our belief in Jesus Christ as the center and the core of what we do and who we are. And then Jesus loved the church and gave himself up for her. Ephesians 5.25 says that Jesus nourishes and tenderly cares for the church because we are members of his body. Nourishes and tenderly cares for. I don't know if you have felt that. I know I have through the body of believers. Oh, mercy, the church where I served before, when I went through knee replacement surgery, wow, for two weeks they were bringing us food. And he is a cook, but they were still bringing us food. Because they cared. The body of the church was ministering to us. And then when I went through breast cancer, mercy, they were all there. And so many of the women who knew what I was going through were ministering to me in so many ways. This is how Jesus through each of us, nourishes us and tenderly cares for us. 
as we each are part of the body of Christ. When we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, we, come, we, we become part of the body of Christ. And with that comes life and strength for our daily living. This is crucial. This is crucial. Jesus Christ provides life to those in the body. First, directly. From the head to the members. Right? You've probably all heard the verses. In John 15, 5, the verse in 15, 5, where Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. So not too long ago, before it got really, really warm around here, Ian and I were out in, out in our yard, and we were trying to decide what to do because we've had the volunteer, voluntary, you know, grapevines that have grown all up into our cedars along the side of our property. And they're so big and so heavy that the branches on the trees are all hanging down, right? Because they're just loaded up with these grapevines. And so we had said, I can, you know, we'll take care of this. So he chopped off some branches and got down under these trees. And he was sawing through grapevines that were this big around. I told him that for Mother's Day I wanted a chainsaw. <laughs> I didn't get one, but I'm gonna. Okay? So, because he was sawing by hand through these grapevines this big around. Well, when I got back from Honduras, I noticed that now the grapevines are all dead and we have leaves all over our grass. Because they were disconnected from the roots and the main body of that vine. Now, interestingly enough, with a little bit of rain we had and that kind of stuff, now instead of the vines growing up into the branches, they're going straight out onto our grass. <laughs> These long vines are growing. As long as we are connected to the root of that vine, we will grow. We'll have times when we feel like we've been cut off. You know, like something has gone on in our life and we're just like, Lord, where are you? But we're still connected. And we will be refreshed and renewed. And as long as we keep that connection strong. So, then secondly, Christ strengthens us and gives us the strength to meet all the things that come into our lives and to deal with them, right? Right? I know all of you, many of you have shared stories with me about the things that you're going through and the way the Lord has pulled you through each one of those situations in one way or another. And Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Right? That's, that, you know, if you don't have a life verse, that's a good one. Okay? Because we can we can be faithful. We can be strong. Even in the midst of sickness and all kinds of things that come into our lives. We can remain connected to the vine, which is Christ. And then, Jesus, the, you know, being Jesus being the head of the vine impacts us indirectly by the proper working of each member of the body. We heard the scripture read this morning that talks about, you know, if you're an eye, you can't say to the foot, I don't need you, right? Each member is given some ability by the grace of God. Romans 12, 6a says, we have gifts that differ according to the grace given us. Each one. And, and the perfect example, I already shared a little bit about that, was our Honduras trip. There were 23 of us from three different states in another country, all working together. And we each found the job that we could do. And every day we had some of the Honduran people saying, you all are like an army of ants. You get here, you get out, everybody does their job, it gets all set up, you know, just like that. In about 20 minutes, the whole thing is set up and they're just watching us going, you know, because they, I mean, wow, it is like a finely oiled machine. Because we each know where we are going to serve and what we need to do. 
And as long as everybody does their part, it works really well. And that's how the body of Christ is. You don't, I, if you notice, there, I mean, there's all different kinds of gifts that are listed in um, Ephesians and other places. And so we are expected to minister to one another. And 1 Peter 4, 9 says, be hospitable to one another without complaining. We've used that one a couple of times in the last few weeks. We're supposed to minister to each other. That's what we're called upon to do. And this church is amazing at that. I mean, before I even hear that somebody's in the hospital, by the time I get to them, they've been visited by five or six people already. It's good. That is powerful. Because let me tell you, people expect me to come. And when I don't, I hear about it. But they expect me to come, right? They're not, they're not expecting. I mean, most folks don't expect other people to show up. And when you do, it is a huge blessing for the person that you have given your time to go and visit. It makes a huge impact on them. We build each other up in love. Ephesians 14, 15 through 16 says, But speaking the truth in love, <coughs> we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. When each of us works and does what we feel the Lord is calling us to do, it is like a finely oiled machine. I love, as a pastor, when I show up at church and all the bushes are trimmed and all the, you know, all the pews have been cleaned out of all the bulletins and all the stuff is ready for Sunday and, all, and I haven't had to do any of it. Because so many members of the body of Christ have found these places where they are able to work and they just do it. It just, it's like, you know, the story of the elf and the elves and the shoemaker, right? Where he would just wake up in the morning and all the little shoes were done. It happens because each of us has gifts and abilities. Sunday school is taught. People come to play the piano for the early service. Becky's there every Sunday. I mean, everything just works together. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Every member, every member is needed for the body to function well. Every member. Whether you cook and clean or preach and teach. Every person is important. And I need you to hear that. I've had people come to me before and say, I have no gifts and abilities, none. God, I was behind the door when God was passing out, you know, gifts and abilities. I've heard that so many times and I just look at them and say, what, what, what floats your boat? You know, what is it that you like to do? And, you know, people will come up with some of the coolest stuff that they do at home and they do other places. You know, I, I love to, to, to clean closets out. <laughs> well, boy, do we need you in the church, right? <laughs> I've always said that I would love to have a key to one of these huge cathedrals in Europe just so I can look through the closets. Because no telling what you'd find, right? They've been stuffed with stuff for years, centuries, some of those churches. And every church in the world has messy closets. I've been in many, many churches. If your gift was cleaning closets and organizing stuff, oh mercy. Just think what amazing things you could do. So there's nothing too small, no ability too small or too unimportant that God gives us that can't be used for the glory of God. It doesn't matter what it is. There is a place for you as part of the body of Christ. All functions of the body are important. And without one part, the other parts suffer. 
When one of us is hurting, we are hurting. When one of us is happy, we should all be rejoicing when something good happens to one of our bodies, members, right? And so we need to do that. The life of the church family is so much richer and stronger when everyone is working together to glorify God and to help build God's kingdom here on earth. And when we're working together, instead of like so many churches do, fighting about stuff and arguing about stuff and building another church right straight across the street because they got mad at the one on the other side of the street and you know all that stuff. What do you think people pay more attention to? My experience is that it hits the news when bad things are happening in the family of God and occasionally They'll pick up on all the amazingly good things that are happening in and through the church. But in a town like Smithville, right? In a little town where everybody knows everybody, if we all start breaking off parts of the body of Christ, everybody's going to know, right? And in this town, they also know when the church is doing something good and right and strong and powerful and helpful. They also know that. So we need to, as the body of Christ, make sure that the positive news coming out of this place is way stronger and more prolific, right, than the negative news. And I think it is. I think it is. And that's how the body of Christ should be. Something that people look up to instead of down on. As we all work together for good. <coughs> as the body of Christ together, we are all necessary. And there is always room for more members, right? That's why we're encouraged to invite our neighbors and to get those kids that are in your neighborhood to come to Bible school. And you never know what is going to happen when we, as the body of Christ, reach out to others who are not yet part of that body. There's plenty of room for everyone. There is always room for more members or parts of that body joining in the work that needs to be done. So we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for the work we are given, for the gifts we are given, for the ability to use them for as long as we are able. And the, the group that I was with, this, this last trip may be the last one because many of the group has gotten older. And while we were there, Dr. Paz, who is the Honduran doctor, kept like whispering in my sister's ear because she was the head of the group this year and saying, I hope you all come back. I hope you all come back. And we would just say, you know, it's in the Lord's hands. It's in the Lord's hands. But she gave this little speech that only my sister and I could understand. And she said, well, even Abraham kept working, and, you know, he was so excited when God told him he was going to have a child at the age of 100, and, you know, and my sister and I were just looking at her like, mm-hmm, we understand where you're going with all of this. But I have heard it said so often in the church, I've done that for 40 years, and I'm tired of doing it, and I don't want to do it anymore. And I had one person say, I had a, a, a pastor tell me that he was known for saying, well, when you die, then you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> right? Until our final breath, or until we are just not able, and I know those times come occasionally when we're just not able, there is something the Lord has for us to do. 
until we just no longer physically or mentally are able. But until that day, all of us are called to find a way in which we can serve. It doesn't have to be a great big thing. The small things, when you add them all up, they make a big difference in what can be accomplished for the honor and glory of God. So, until that day when we take our last breath and we open our eyes and see Jesus face to face, let us look for ways in which we can serve the Lord faithfully as part of the body of Christ. Amen.